Now, in the face of the growing numbers of the cases of COVID-19, it is important to stress the need to keep safe and observe all safety measures to curb and stop the spread. As we highlight the reality of COVID-19, it is also a fact that people have recovered and are recovering. And with me now in the studio is Oshawa Biolu Ayodeji, who runs the Stand to End Rape Initiative, a group advocating against sexual violence and a Commonwealth Young Person of the Year. She she is a COVID-19 survivor and now shares her journey into recovering from coronavirus. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations. You beat coronavirus hands down. <laughs> yes, I did. Share the experience with us. Um, I mean, it's a very tough place to be um, because it's like a new virus and everyone is trying to learn through the process and get to understand what the virus is and get a vaccine. So when I came down with the virus, I was a bit, you know, scared. Oh, there's no vaccine, there's no cure. How will my kids be managed? Will I survive? You know, will I, will I make it? You know, I had so many thoughts running through my mind, but you know, I'm happy and grateful to, mm -hmm. to have fought to leave. Yeah, you made it. Uh, I know that um, when this happened, you had gone to the UK, you mm -hmm. had so many plans, you had yeah. so many things lined up for you and all were canceled. How did that make you feel? It made me feel very bad um, because, you know, I went for like a top level event in the UK and I had like interviews lined up. I had so many, you know, um, projects coming up and I was very excited to come back home to implement them and to grant those interviews. Mm -hmm. um, but when I fell ill, I knew the responsible thing to do was to take care of myself and That's to right. prevent further spread. Mm -hmm. Should I actually have COVID? Because at the time I wasn't even, you know, sure of um, what I had at the mm -hmm. time. So I, I had to self-isolate for a couple of days before I got tested by NCDC and it was confirmed that it was a case um, of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So I felt very bad, but then again, it was more important to leave than to worry about things I could get later. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And you did. we must commend you for doing the most responsible thing, which was as soon as you came back, you know, uh, you self-isolated and, yeah. and thankfully NCDC were able to respond also to you and, yeah. uh, you know, everything the way it happened now let's talk about your days in isolation uh, mm. how did that go you know when they put you in a room um, they don't lock the room but then you know that you don't have access to go out of that room is there any reason why the room is not locked for cross ventilation yeah or? I mean okay. you know there, there has to be fresh air and mm -hmm. again I'm not a prisoner so it would be mm -hmm. weird for them to lock the by doors the way. Um, but you know when you have like a room and you're by yourself and you can't go out and you're just like looking at the ceiling and counting you know like you can literally count the air which is impossible but you mm -hmm. can you know picture it in your mind um, it was a very lonely period for me, um, but it was also a time for me to pray, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, to pray to God, to say, God, listen, please help me, you know, fight through this mm -hmm. um, process. So when other people joined in, it was a bittersweet experience because, you know, again, I had people to talk to, but mm -hmm. I, I also wasn't happy that, you know, more people were getting infected because that means it would spread if more people are, you know, contracting the virus. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a battle for me at, um, at the center because, you know, taking medication, my body was fighting, you know, my immune system was fighting, I was reacting also to the medication, which was normal, um, the doctor said. So it was, it was, it was a battle, you mm -hmm. know, it was, a, it was a serious, you know, moment and defining moment in my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you're a very strong person. There's no doubt about that. And that's why you are also a survivor. Yesterday was the day for, you know, for uh, health workers. Yes. And you put out a tweet. Uh, yeah. I, I believe it will be displayed uh, shortly to appreciate the doctors yeah. and nurses and all those who are at the infectious disease hospital. Yes. Uh, what, what happened? What was your experience with them, you know? Yeah. How did they impact on you during those days? I mean, when you are sort of with certain people that maybe you, you're not with every day of your life, you kind of want to build a relationship with them. So we built a bond where they will come into the isolation center. I see them like three times every day, morning, afternoon, night. So they became family. You know, I would check on me and on days I was, you know, throwing up. They wouldn't be angry with me like, oh, you're messing everywhere up. Mm. They would clean it, you know. They would hold me. They would wear gloves anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they would hold me and pat me on the back and tell me, you know, fight. You know, we know it's tough, but we're here with you. So 
the least I could do is appreciate them because mm -hmm. again, they are putting their lives at risk as well while providing services to us to get better. Mm -hmm. And if I can't give them money or I can't give them anything, what I can give them is, you know, um, undiluted appreciation for their services, for their love, you know, and just to help them know that we are here saying thank you. Mm -hmm. We're here saying thank you. Before I let you go, there are people who still don't believe that COVID-19 is real. Yeah. What do you say to them? Can they see my face? Oh, of course. They if they can't see my face, then COVID-19 is real because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I experienced it and I had symptoms. So, you know, I experienced the entire thing except, you know, shortness of breath. Um, but I experienced all other symptoms. So I can tell you that it's not a, um, a lie or a propaganda like they might want to believe. COVID-19 will kick your system. And the only way you can prevent that from happening is if you stay in your house, mm -hmm. stay at home, you know, wash your hands, sanitize as much as you can, and just, you know, have a very clean environment. Mm -hmm. You are the person who can help us stop the spread. Whether you believe it or not, COVID is here and you can actually help us stop it. Thank you so very much for coming live on in the studio and for sharing your experience. We also say congratulations again. Indeed, you are a survivor. Thank you.